Peace, peace, black family. So when did racism begin? Follow me on this one because I'm going to try to make a lot of different points in a three-minute video. Here we go. So first and foremost, any person who dibbles and dabbles in psychology will tell you that the mythology creates the psychology. As it says right here, mythology, through the stories and legends it tells, explores the innermost thoughts and desires of human beings as well as the psychological motivations behind their actions. In this way, mythology can be seen as a form of ancient psychology, which means that every culture on this planet has a creation story. And that mythology creation story then shapes the psychology of the people. Unfortunately, a lot of us don't know any creation stories outside of the Bible. Now that we're clear that mythology creates a psychology, let's take a look at so-called European culture and some of their mythologies. First and foremost, let's go to Greek mythology and look at the goddess Athena, who's actually black. And I'm not just making this up right here. Athena is a dark skinned black woman. Side note, the capital Athens is actually named after Athena. And as you can see, she is the goddess of wisdom and courage. It says right here, Athena, the daughter of Zeus, was produced without a mother and emerged full grown from his forehead, which means that he was thinking about Athena. He produced her from his mind because Europeans have always had Africans on their mind. But wait, it gets better. After Zeus produces Athena from his mind right out of his forehead, Athena then becomes jealous of the most beautiful woman in the city who is known as Medusa. So then Athena then turns Medusa's long, beautiful, straight hair into a bunch of snakes. And this is how you get the story of Medusa and Athena. Apparently in Greek mythology, this black woman was jealous of this white woman's hair and then turned her hair to a bunch of snakes. Look this stuff up. And also you have the story of the pygmies in Greek mythology. These pygmies are depicted as African, but look how big the Europeans made their phallus in their statues. And obviously we know how they depicted themselves in statues. And this goes into Dr. Francis Cress Wellsing's theory to some degree. But because we don't understand people's origin stories, we sit around here and say things like racism didn't exist in antiquity when obviously if you go to their origin stories you would see that racism in some way shape or form existed rugu culture has always been based on the idea of others right making people different from who you are if you go back to roman culture greek culture you will always see the sense of otherness i'll give you another example right out of roman history the romans didn't know squat diddly until they ran into the etruscans the etruscans were native to northern italy they were skilled metal workers and engineers the etruscans strongly influenced the development of rome civilization they had a system of writing and the romans adopted their alphabet they learned everything they could learn from these etruscan people who are dark skinned black african people and then they committed genocide against them yes let me repeat the romans learned everything from these dark skinned wide nosed thick lipped african people and then slaughtered them romans recognized they were different from the etruscans okay and then they learned everything they could learn and they slaughtered them in conclusion this is what makes a group of people strong and powerful when they have a creation story, an origin story, a mythology that creates a psychology. This is what the nation of Islam was able to do when they were able to turn men who were drug dealers, pimps and drug addicts off the streets. They gave them a mythology. They gave them a story that the white man was the devil. And so every black man who was a part of the nation of Islam began to reject everything the white man had to offer based off of that mythology story. But a lot of us think that this is our origin mythology story instead of looking to more african influences to be our african mythology creation story as my sister t says right here they spent years studying us collectively how many years have we spent studying them collectively know your origin story the mythology creates the psychology and there's no way that we can be powerful accepting someone else's mythology story she really turned that girl hair to a bunch of snakes